Hello, this is a demonstration of WinForm Designs, a um, new service for layout optimization. Um, this is a web service, so let's go to winfarmdesigns.com. That's where you can find the service. There's some uh, small description about uh, our service. So, but let's get started. What you need to do is to sign up for an account. That's easily done. Um, I already have an account, so but what you need to do is to type in the email, uh, define a password, and you will get a confirmation in your email. Uh, and then you will get a link to get approval. <clears throat> I already have an account, so I just log in with my account. And then you're taken to <clears throat> Uh, the web service. So um, let's say I have a project. Uh, I go to data. I define my new project as demo project. Uh, I want to optimize with some turbines. So let's <clears throat> try optimize with 35 turbines. Um, if you're not sure what type of information you should put in, we have some information here. So you can browse that. <clears throat> uh, this will be in uh, <clears throat> the location will be in Trondheim, so uh, this is the UDEM zone for that particular uh, project. Uh, I, will <clears throat> I have some uh, VIG files uh, with a hub height 80 meters, and uh, I'll try to optimize with some semi turbines uh, <clears throat> with a water diameter of 108 meters. Uh, the type of optimization we can do here is either just minimum distance constraints or we can also have an elliptic distance constraint. So I will use that. So typically I will use uh, 5 rotor diameters in prevailing wind direction and 3 rotor diameters in uh, transverse direction. So let's see, um, that will be 540 for a Siemens turbine of 100. Uh, meters rotor diameter and 324 would be the elliptical constraints. Um, <clears throat> also, the direction I can either let the program decide based on wind map, but in some cases, uh, in large projects, you can actually have directional shifts in the across the planning area. Um, so, to be certain about the results, uh, I would like to define the prevailing wind direction. In this case, it will be 300 uh, degrees. And I can upload a VIT file. <clears throat> so, what you need to perform this optimization is number one, a VIG file. And that has to be less than, I think, 27 megabytes. In, in this case, we have some restrictions at the moment on the size of the, the files. But the important thing is that it's a VRG file. Uh, the second thing you need is a turbine file. So either in the form of a PWS file, that's a typical format for WinZim, uh, or you can actually edit your own data and copy and paste from Excel spreadsheet or from uh, WinPro or, or other uh, file formats. So <clears throat> let's upload a PWS file. Mm, I have some to one data here. Uh, alternatively, uh, you could edit to one file data. Here I have some data of um, a Vestas turbine. I could select another one, make a new turbine, or I can even copy paste from, let's say, um, here I have some additional turbine file, and I could actually copy uh, <coughs> wind speed bin, power curve, and thrust coefficient uh, straight into. Um, the editor and then save the changes. So, but I will use the <coughs> PWS file to define it power curve in this case. Uh, the next thing we need is a planning area. 
so I have already a shape file with planning area here. Mm. Optionally, you can also add constraints. So <clears throat> let's say you have some exclusion areas or, or some environmental protected areas. Uh, you can you can use you can define that in terms of shape files. Um, and uh, but it, it has to be shape files. Okay, so this is what you need. Start an optimization and then press send. And what happens now is that the VIG file will be uploaded. Then it will be combined with the turbine data in order to create an energy map at 80 meters height. That's the hub height. And that's the basis for the optimization. So generation of the energy map itself will take some time, um, but this runs in the cloud and and some of the time will be dedicated to that. Now <clears throat> the optimization has started, <clears throat> and uh, we typed in 35 turbines, so that's a fairly decent size of the project, and uh, it will take a little bit of time, but it, it it's fairly fast, so. Uh, you will be notified through the email uh, when the optimization has finished, and you can also view the status here on the on the screen. So let's wait for some minutes for the optimization to complete. So now I can check my email. I noticed that my actually my optimization has completed from the email, so I I go to the optimization. Uh, let's just refresh this. Um, my optimization has completed and I would like to look at results. So I press the view results here. Uh, I have a panel here where I can add a new project and, and optimize. So it takes a little bit of time to load the results. Uh, you can see the status down here. Now, I initially put in, I wanted to optimize with 35 turbines. I didn't know really whether it was possible to optimize with 35 turbines. But this is what the uh, optimization model will figure out how many turbines can you squeeze in. So, what the model does is to actually start with just one turbine and optimize. It optimizes with two turbines, three turbines, and so on, up to the maximum number of turbines, uh, according to your specifications. In case it's not pos physically possible to fit in 35 turbines, it starts at 31 turbines. Uh, uh, sorry, 32 turbines. So let's look at that layout. So this is the layout. I will include the constraints. Uh, this is the planning area. Uh, here we have the energy map as well. And the wind map that was imported is, is here, shown here. So let's look at um, some of the turbines. This is turbine number 17. Uh, it's the 17 most producing turbine. It has um, some 4% weight loss and a net energy production of 8.8 gigawatt hours. So, um, <clears throat> here you can inspect the layout, and it's actually, a by, as a byproduct, you can also look at the different other layouts, 28 turbines, or 20, 20 turbines for that matter. Um, it's actually as a byproduct or as a feature of the optimization algorithm, it's actually possible to optimize for one, two, three, four, and five turbines and add gradually turbines, then optimize only one layout of, let's say, 32 turbines. So this is a special, this is just happens to be a, 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 the way the algorithm works. It's actually faster to gradually add turbines and optimize. Anyways, let's look at layout number 32 and let's export that.
there is an export function, uh, a download function, so you can inspect results and you can continue work on the layout in uh, one of your other WinFarm design tools. This is how it looks. Here is the export file, a zipped file, and let's have a look at the different files here. Uh, one of the files is what I call the energy curve. Uh, the energy curve is basically uh, the total energy projection from each of the layouts. So have, let's have a look at this energy curve. Uh, by plotting this uh, curve, um, you can sort of, uh, <clears throat> let's see, you can sort of inspect how, how the energy production on the y-axis increases with the size of the wind farm. So from Going from one turbine to 32 turbines, obviously the energy production increase. So, uh, but let's look at uh, the full number of full of dollars. Um, so here I have just calculated the number of full of dollars for each layout. So let's have a look at uh, the number of full of dollars. Uh, these are gross. Uh, these are gross energy uh, estimates. So. We have to deduce also the, the, the losses uh, from these numbers. But here you can see as with the increasing uh, number of turbines, then the number of full flowers for each uh, you know, uh, turbine uh, will decrease. So it might not be the optimal or economy-wise, it won't, won't necessarily be optimal to have to squeeze into the turbine. Turbines. It could be actually 25 turbines would be an appropriate size of this uh, of, of this project. So that's one of the first results to look at. <clears throat> uh, we can then pick the layout. So let's look at uh, layout number 32. We like look like this, and <clears throat> here you can find each turbine in the layout. Uh, with coordinates, gross energy production, weight loss, and the net energy production. And from here, you can, of course, iterate on the layout. You can import this into your favorite program like WinPro or WinFarmer or Park Optimizer, and you can continue to improve the layout further. Uh, knowing that you have actually an optimal uh, starting point, uh, what the optimization have just performed is actually uh, providing a global optimal layout uh, with a given set of elliptical constraints. However, the layout, um, the optimization does not consider, for instance, um, road or infrastructure costs, and also the way clauses are post uh, calculated uh, but comparing the elliptical layout, uh, layout optimization with other tools it's uh, it uh, shows to perform quite good so I encourage you to try out the layout optimization and compare with your other tools to try it out uh, you go to windfarmdesigns.com to register uh, I can repeat this um, here Go so just the wind farm designs. And then to get started, you just registered. Oh, and once you have registered, you can just log in with your email and chosen password.